Okay, so now let me talk about uh, signatures and, and some of the transaction uh, mechanics. So, um, so digital signature is very important. It's the way that a transaction is actually uh, organized. So if you're sending, let's say, uh, some Ethereum, you need to prove that you've got the private key. And that's where a digital signature actually comes in. So you need to prove it without revealing the actual uh, key. So, so this is uh, very important, and we use an algorithm to actually do this. And this is kind of how a digital uh, signature uh, works. So uh, let's actually go and look at this in some detail. So the private key is called the signing key, S key, and it's completely secret, of course. So we don't want to reveal that. The public key is sometimes called the verification key. And it's mathematically linked to the private key, as I've already uh, mentioned. Okay, so, so think of the private key um, goes into an elliptic curve uh, algorithm and a public key comes out. And we've already gone through that this has got uh, 512 uh, bits to it. And there's actually, the reason it's longer, it's two coordinates, uh, x and y. So it's really easy, as I said, to generate the uh, public key with the private key and very difficult to go in the other direction. So the digital signature, what happens is that we've got a message, and this might be our transaction. And uh, what we're going to do is the inputs for the signature algorithm are going to be the private key, of course, and, um, and a nonce, or just think of it as a random number that, uh, that is put in. And uh, we put those together, and within the elliptic curve, and you can, if you're interested in this, go into much more detail, um, there's certain ingredients that are very important for this elliptic curve operation, including a base point, a modulus, which tells us the maximum number uh, that can actually happen in the operation, and an order. So these three things, and then basically a digital signature comes out of that. And it's got two coordinates, um, R and S. So, uh, so to verify uh, the, the signature, um, what we're going to do is we've got the two coordinates that are available, R and S. Uh, we've got the message, and we've got the verification key, which is the public key. We pass all of that through the elliptic curve operation with, um, of course, the base point and the order. And we're going to derive a new point. And then what we're going to do is to check one of the coordinates, the x coordinate. And if it's checked, then if it's verified, then it is a valid signature, which means that the person signing must have the private key. And that's how a di digital signature actually works. So this is what it actually looks like. Uh, and we don't need to go through all of the details of this, but uh, you can see what the form of the elliptic curve is. You can see what the base point, the order, um, and the modulus uh, actually is. These are extremely large numbers. Uh, notice that everything is done in hexadecimal here, but these are, are very large numbers. But this works very quickly and seamlessly. So uh, a few things to notice about this. Uh, so when you sign, uh, you basically prove that you have the private key without revealing the private key. And everybody can see that. It's instantly uh, verified. Okay, so, uh, so think of this as you've got the address. We know the address is derived from the private key. But with that address and with the digital signature, then you prove that you actually have the private key that's associated with that address. Remember, anybody can grab an address. Like, you've got my address, right? So I showed you my address that fall, that's got CCE as the last three hex. So uh, you've got that address. And uh, the problem is that 
you can't prove that you've got the private key associated with that address. There's no way you can do that unless you somehow hack my computer. And even if you do that, the private key's not on my computer. It's off the internet. It's actually in a hard copy form. So public keys, anybody can see. A private key, um, that's different. So that is, uh, that is basically hidden. So uh, the digital signature provides that bridge without revealing the private key. You can do this signature where anybody can figure out that you must have the private key that's associated with that public address or public uh, key. Okay, so, so this is essentially how uh, this works. And this is just an example. Uh, there's plenty of uh, websites that actually do this where you can actually go and uh, choose the elliptic curve uh, algorithm and actually go and uh, do an exercise of generating um, a message that's signed. So this is, uh, again, a, a, a common technology. It is complicated, but uh, it's important for you to know uh, the basics of this uh, technology. And you can see uh, in Bitcoin, this is used uh, in terms of the opt uh, check sig. Um, and uh, within Bitcoin, this is also used in Ethereum and almost all uh, credible uh, blockchains use uh, this particular uh, technique. Okay, so the the last thing in this module is how a transaction actually works. And this depends upon the blockchain uh, protocol. And let me kind of start with a, a Bitcoin uh, transaction. And what I'd like to do is to kind of zoom in on the actual graphic that you see over here. So let's take a careful look. In that bag, there are three things. Uh, you can see that there's a three, there's a 0.2, and a 0 0.01. Those are called unspent transaction outputs. So they represent Bitcoin. So the total balance in this wallet is 3.21. So suppose that you want to do a transaction and you need to uh, to send um, 0.15 Bitcoin to someone. Okay, so the way to do this is you're going to use the unspent transaction output for the 0.2. That's going to be the input to the transaction. And then the transaction is going to have two outputs. So the first output is the 0.15 that you're sending to somebody to, let's say, pay for uh, a good or service. But then there's 0 0.05 left. So think of that as the change. And what you're going to do is to send that back to yourself. Okay, so, uh, so effectively what we've done here, we've changed the bag. So that 0 0.02 is completely gone. And it's being replaced by another unspent transaction output, which is 0 0.05. So this is the way Bitcoin works. But Ethereum operates in a different system. So while Bitcoin has got these unspent uh, balances and you need to choose which one to use, indeed, we could have chosen we could have chosen the, the three. So we could have chosen the three and sent 0.15 and then had change of 2.85. So we could have done that. Um, but Ethereum's system, in my opinion, is much more straightforward. Uh, and it is a system of account balances. So it's more intuitive, though the Bitcoin um, method is, is extremely interesting. Uh, it is a little more intuitive to keep track of balances. And we saw this uh, in terms of our supply mechanics, in terms of checking the balance.